It is the late 1970s, the Cold War continues. Across Europe, unemployment is at record highs. The IRA is bombing the country on a regular basis. Listening to the news is dark and uninspiring. But the champion equines, like the Farlaps and sea biscuits of the Great Depression, as if God sent, have a knack of arriving just when the public needs them most. A welcome distraction to the financial hardships and dim outlooks of the times. We all know about the kidnapping and death of Shogar, but before that, he was the hero. He was the champion racehorse. Shergar is opening up a gap of four lengths now as they come into the final furlong. And Shergar is going well clear and continuing to go. in County Kildare, Ireland. With glamour show horse looks, the bay colt has a white blaze, four white socks, and a blue eye. The phrase, four white feet keep him till the end, may have been apt, as he would develop into a spectacular stamp of a horse. While being educated at the slower paces, he is smooth, coordinated, and being of good temperament, is easy to ride. As his race debut nears on September 18, with Lester Piggott in the saddle, he eases into a fast gallop. Flattening into full stride, he is impressive with his deep girth and elongated body, providing a low and compact stride. Excitement within the stable builds. He has entered in a race over 1,600 metres at Newbury. Shoga duly starts an 11 to 8 favourite in a large 23 horse field. He bubbles along under a hole until the final furlong, where he is let loose, and with a big burst wins by four lengths in course record time. It is an audacious debut that can't be ignored. Press correspondent Richard Berlin is smitten and writes that the win is the best two-year-old form of the season. Shoga is immediately stepped up to a Group 1 race. He beats two high-class winning two-year-olds, Robolino and Recitation, but still finds one too good. Presenting the home side in the lead, followed by Beldale Flutter in second, Lester has, has Shergar settling down in third, followed by Recitation four, John Mathias has the favourite, Robolino up on the outside, five, and then comes Norman Style and finally the 51 outsider, Admiral's Air. They've come just about three furlongs now, and it's still Ernie Johnson on Shergrit in the lead from Pat Edry with Beldale Flutter two, right on the rail, spot the white blaze on the face of Shergar, then Robolino with a noseband being pushed a little wide there, I thought, by recitation. Then comes Admiral's Air and just last is Norman Style. They're into the final straight and approaching the four furlong pole, which is the halfway point of this William Hill Futurity. There it is, and it's still Shergrit one, Beldale Flutter two. Shergar being switched towards the outside for a, a run in third. Then comes four recitation, really bowling along well now. Robolino at the back and struggling a bit with John Mathias. Inside the final three furlongs, it's still Shergrit from Beldale Flutter looking real danger now too. Here comes recitation and Shergar as they race towards the final two furlongs. And Beldale Flutter now on terms with the Shergret and Pat Edery has got uh, a good run on him now. And it's Beldale Flutter in front, Shergar going well. Recitation uh, struggling a bit on the near side. Robolino, the favourite shawl, has got no chance unless he can sprout wings and he can't inside the last furlong. And it's Beldale Flutter and Pat Edery clear now of Shergar. Lester Pickett second. And it's between these two former champion jockeys. Pat Edery and Beldale Flutter going to get the upper hand and racing up towards the line. Beldale Flutter wins the Windworm Hill majority up the line. Beldale Flutter the winner, Shergar. The reality is that Shoga is still only a two-year-old and still growing. However, the winner, Beldal Flutter, 
will frank the form, a lady gaining a time form rating of 130. Back in training as a free roll, Churga's fast action stride, proving ever powerful. His body has matured and strengthened, and he is set for the derby. During his early morning track work, he produces blistering gallops, smashing well-performed opponents by 10 lengths. He steps onto the racetrack for his first start as a three-year-old. On the inside of that is Capstan in fifth, followed by Krug, Welsh Reel and King's General, who's just beginning to improve, having been last up to now. And as they run round towards the straight, they're a good four and a half furlongs from home. Sheer Grit continuing to lead only by three quarters of a length from Lombardi and then Shergar, Kirtling, then King's General, then comes Capstan and the last two are Welsh Reel and Krug. As the leaders come, the field comes into the straight now, three and a half furlongs from home. Sheer Grit over on the far rails, Shergar right up with it, that's the one with a very white face. Then comes Lombardi, then Kirtling a bit wider, then King's General wider still. Two and a half furlongs from home, it's Shergar now in the lead from Kirtling and King's General and Sheer Grit on the rails. Two furlongs from home now with Shergar the leader from Sheer Grit and then comes Kirtling and then King's General but it's Shergar who's opening up a gap of four lengths now as they come into the final furlong and Shergar is going well clear and continuing to go away, he's going to win by a big margin. Shergar going a long way clear now, race for second place between Kirtling and King's General and then comes Sheer Grit. Impressed again. Berlin writes that Shergar's odds for the Derby were excellent at 33 to 1. As further training for the Epson Derby, his trainer decides to give Shoga a race on a similar challenging, undulating left-hand course. He selects Chester. Shoga jumps nicely and sits just off the leaders. With half a mile to go, Shoga's jockey gives him a niggle and he dashes clear. Into the straight is giving three cracks of the whip to keep his mind on the job and he wins by 10 lengths, the widest margin ever in the big race. Many who witness the race claim it is one of the greatest wins of all time. Baralyn tells everybody to bet like men for the Derby. Shoga is a raging odds on favorite, but some of the experts still have doubts he may not be so effective on the good to soft ground. His teenage jockey Swinburne might lack poise for the big race. Lydia is a nine in the lead from Sunday Builds in second place and just in behind these on the outside comes Silver Season. Then comes El Nassim behind El Nassim Shergar uh, racing prominently. The back marker is Wembley Hall. Robolino is also towards the rear. And as they settle down, running for the first two furlongs, it suddenly builds on the outside of Riveretto. Then Shergar going well in the left of the picture. Uh, then just in behind that one is Waverley Hall. That's the back marker. That's the one that's already making uh, some way adrift. They continue their stiff uphill climb. And it's Riveretto in the lead. Into the top of the hill, coming down to the halfway stage. And it's Riveretto in the lead. Riveretto the leader from Silver Season in second. Shergar spot his white face there in third degree. Leicester Pickett going well in fourth. Then Church Parade 5, Scintillating Area 6 and Sheer Grid 7. Then comes King's General 8 with Linda Bill 9 and Sunday Bill 10. Then comes Al Nash with Robolino making up ground up on the outside. But it's still Riveretto that leads as they begin the descent to Tatton Corner. It's Riveretto in the lead from Sunday Bill Shergar. There on the left of the picture up on the outside. Then Scintillating Area just in behind them. And behind Scintillating Area is Church Parade. Then comes Shotgun. Then comes King's General in the field. Well and truly strong out as they sweat into uh, the home straight. And having round Tatton Corner, and the white face of Shergar moves up to dispute the lead with Riveretto. Shergar, Riveretto from Silver Season, scintillating air. Then behind these comes Shotgun and uh, Boris Swinburne is committed. He's going for home, and Shergar is going on and going clear. The odds on favourite clear in the derby with just over two furlongs left to go. It's Shergar in the lead and clear from Silver Season. Leicester Pickett coming very wide on Shotgun, but they've got a two furlongs left to race under two furlongs to go, and it's Shergar in the lead. Shergar from scintillating air. Church Parade is third, Shotgun fourth, then comes Dent of Gold, but Shergar is well clear with a furlong to go. Shergar and Long Long Ray clear of his rivals. 
Schurgar in the lead and clear for us. Winburn riding it out, going for home ahead of Dinterthorn in second. Cincinnati Leonard is there, Chocolate is fourth. But coming up to the line, Schurgar is going to win it at the line. Schurgar is the winner, very easy winner. Dinterthorn ridden by Walter Swinburne, the 19 year old jockey. Uh, and bred by the Argatar. Second was number five, Glint of Gold, owned by Mr. Paul Menon, trained at King's Clear by Ian Boarding and ridden by, by John Mathias and trained by Paul Menon. Said, there's our winner, there's Shergar, and the brilliant ride by young Walter Swinburne, the ice cool rider of Shergar. Sir Ivor was the last odds on favourite to win this race, and Sir Ivor won it in 1968 when ridden by Lester Pickett. But there you can see Shergar, the authority with which this horse won, and there, Walter Swinburne being congratulated by the jockey on the third horse home, scintillating air, that's the third horse home, and the jockey, Jeff Baxter, there, just shaking hands with the jockey that finished second, that was John Mathias on Glint of Gold. Well, John, that race was won with authority and command John, your opinions. It's been the most marvellously predictable derby that I've ever seen because from the moment Walter took his position third at the top of the hill, you could always easily imagine what was going to happen because it's exactly what's happened in his other two races this season. What was it like out there? Just well, I was just a passenger on a very good horse. You were always country? Yes. You weren't even was it easier than you thought it would be? Well, as you can see, we're now trotting. He's saying he's just a passenger. Here's Michael Stout in front. Michael, many, many congratulations. Thank you very well much. Well done. Thank you very what much. What was it like from the stand? Well, a great thrill. Great thrill. You were very, very cool, but were you upset before the race? Butterflies, things like that? No, we kept nice and cool, and he was always in a lovely position, and one didn't have too many worries. How good is he, Michael? Very good. Very good. Longest distance winner for a very long time. Yes. yes. He said he was going so easy all the way, okay? and here we're passing Shotgun, the second favourite, the Yorkshire horse. Barrel Lynn, a writer at Choga, is one of the finest horses he has ever seen. The horse is now a national hero in Ireland. While out on the gallops on the 15th of June, Choga throws his jockey, dangerously charges through a hedge and trots off down the street. A local catches him as he stops for a graze and walks him back to the stables. But nothing can stop Shoga. Next up is the Irish Sweeps Derby. With Swinburne under suspension, the mount goes back to Lester Piggott. The going is on the firm side and Piggott's instructed not to let the horse down unless it becomes a really necessary. Ground and Shergar will be the last of the 12 installed for the 1981 Irish Sweeps Derby. That's it. They're all in, under starter's orders, and they're away. And away to a good even break with cut above on the inside. The first to show, Shergar, right up with him too in the early stages. Wilbur Heights is the back marker, and it's cut above from Baz Bombatti and Shergar. Then comes Jollier and Kirtling behind them, Gaffer Dunlow. Behind Gaffer Dunlow is crowned hair, and then comes Orr, then Don Spid, Bustinetto and Wolver Heights, and cut above, Willie Carson making it from Shergar on the inside of Baz Bombatti with Jolly Air up there, and then comes Kirtling and crowned hair. Behind uh, crowned hair is Gaffer Dunlow, then Don Spid and Orr, and then young Kildare, and the back markers are the stable companions, Bustinetto and Wolver Heights. And still Willie Carson making it on cut above from Jollier. Lester on the inside, close on Shergar. Towards Shergar's outside is Kirkling. Just on the outside of them come Crown Hare and then Baz Bombatti, Wolverheights and Bustin Eto are still the back markers. They pass the seven furlong pole. Still cut above in the lead from Jollier. Then on the inside, Shergar. On Shergar's outside is Kirtling making a forward move there. Just in behind them, Crown Hare. Behind Crown Hare is Gaffer's down low. Or is dropping back. Wolver Heights is the back marker. They're racing towards the six furlong pole, and as they do so, it's still cut above in the lead for England. From Kirtling also for England in second. Shergar for England is third. Then comes Crown Hare on the outside. Young Kildare's not far behind the leaders. Then Jollier, then Dance Bid. Baz Bombatti has dropped back to last. Race 
slow now, and as they do so, it's still on the inside. Willie Carson on cut above from Pat Edery on Kirkling. Just in behind them comes Shergar, then all making good progress. They're riding the home turn now into the straight. Three furlongs to run, and Shergar has come there to take it up. Shergar and Lester Figure towards the right of the picture now was taken up running from Kirkling, cut above, then comes Orr, behind Orr, and making good ground is Gap of Dunlow. They're inside the final two furlongs, and Shergar has streaked into the lead from Kirkling in second, then comes Gap of Dunlow, producing a good run, cut above, hanging on over on the far side, but racing down the furlong pole, and Shergar lengthening his stride. Lester Figure looking over his left shoulder, sees no possible danger whatsoever. Riding up to win this, Ian Sprick, he's only in an exercise canter. He's won the Irish Street Star, the inner canter, second cut above and third gap and down low. The one, two, three, Shergar cut above and down bid. They're the one, two, three in the Irish Street Star, and what, what an amazingly comfortable triumph for Shergar. He just cantered to the front, filled it two or three times, as over on the left, Willie's hard at work on cut above. Wallace Gwynban coming there, the sheepskin nose band on Don Speed has run a very good race. Behind them, Gap of Don Lowe and Orr, but look at Shergar. Second was cut above, number four, owned by Sir John Astor, trained by Dick Hearn, written by Willie Carson. And third, number five, Don Speed, owned by Mr. John B. Crook, trained by Dermot Wells and written by Wallace Whitman. The fifth winner for Lester Pickett of the Irish Sweets Derby gets an immediate quote of 15 to 8 on from uh, the Coral Organization for the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Diamond Stakes, 2 to 1 on with Ladbrokes for the Ascot Showpiece in July. And there he is, there's the third just behind him, uh, Dance Bid. And so uh, the result of the 1981 Irish Sweeps Derby, first, number 10, Shergar, owned by His Highness the Aga Khan, trained by Michael Stout, Michael's first uh, classic victory in Ireland with his third runner, and ridden by Lester Pickett. Second, for the first time, Joker faces older horses at his next start, but such is Voga's reputation that he starts at odds of 5 to 2, odds on. Under starters orders, and they're away. Shergar, Master Willie and Light Cavalry the first to show, and Light Cavalry going on now from Master Willie and Shergar. Then comes Madame Gay, Pellerin on the inside, Fingal's Cave, and finally Crackerbell. Light Cavalry making it from Master William Shergar disputing second. Just behind them come Madame Gay, then Pellerin. Behind Pellerin is Fingal's Cave, and finally Light Cavalry as they race downhill still towards Swindley Bottom. Light Cavalry not taking him along at a very fast gallop at the moment. From Master Willie on the outside of Shergar, then Pellerin and Madame Gay matching strides are behind them, Fingal's Cave, and finally Crackerbell. Racing towards the mile pole now in the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Diamond Stakes, and it's Light Cavalry, Lester Bigot in the lead from Master Willie and Shergar, then Madame Gay and Pellerin, then Fingal's Cave, and finally Crackerbell. Racing towards the seven furlong pole and the pace has quickened and Light Cavalry still in the lead from Master Willie second. Shergar the three-year-old on the inside. Just behind them, Madame Gay the only filly. Then comes Pellerin behind Pellerin. is Fingal's Cave and then comes Crackerbell. They pass the seven marker, racing towards the six now and still Light Cavalry from Master Willie. Then Shergar, Madame Gay getting closer. Then Pellerin behind Pellerin, Fingal's Cave and finally Crackerbell. They pass the six furlong pole now, racing towards the five and it's Light Cavalry from Master Willie, Shergar, Madam Gay going up on the outside of Shergar. Pellerin comes next, Fingal's Gave and Crackerbell getting closer. 
breaking towards the half mile mark and as they do so master willie goes up on the outside of light cavalry shergar on the inside then madame gay behind madame gay is bingle k pellerin is losing ground then comes crackerbell they're raging towards the home turn and it's master willie and light cavalry master willie going on now from light cavalry madame gay has moved around on the outside of shergar shergar in fourth place now as they race towards the home turn crackerbell's improved into fifth and master willie going for home now it's master willie with the advantage over light Cavalry, Walter Swinburne slips through on the rails on Shergar, but it's Master Willie with the advantage. Madame Gay coming there strongly on the sand side. Shergar making ground over on the far side now, racing down towards the furlong pole, and Shergar, the three-year-old, first through to take it up on the far side. It's Shergar now from Madame Gay, Master Willie, Pingles came putting it a good run, but as they race into the closing stages, Shergar lengthening in his stride. It's going to put it in tremendous style. Shergar striding up to the line from Madame Gay and Pingles Cave, and at the line, Shergar wins it. Madame Gay and Pingles Cave in a photo for second and third. A photo for second, but no doubt about the winner of the 1981 King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Diamond Stakes. First, number seven, Shergar, owned by His Highness the Aga Khan, trained by Michael Stout, and written by Walter Swinburne. Did you notice him corner the home turn like a greyhound? Leading into his next start, the St. Ledger, rumours are circulating. Apparently, he is moolish around the stables. He is sluggish in his morning gallops. But on race day, the claims are dismissed by the stable. And he is again a red hot odds on favourite. Oh, we see Willie. Lovely. Oh, it's going to be Sir Barkley. Well, I'd like to be sitting on top of him. Uh, but sentiment says I'd like Leicester to win. 200 hits and ledger. Here we go. And they're on their way. And as they begin to settle down, it's Magic King going on from Bastomi. Then comes Glint of Gold in third place and cut above fourth. And then Shergar just on the outside of Riveretto, but on the inside of Brigadier Hawk. And they're going a very, very true gallop indeed with Magikin in the lead from Bustomi in second place and then Glint of Gold third then comes Cut Above, then Shergar then Riveretto in the back half who is already Brigadier Hawk with Magikin in the lead from Bustomi in second place Magikin, Bustomi then comes Glint of Gold and Cut Above and Riveretto and Shergar and Brigadier Hawk Magikin in the lead from Bustomi in second place then Glint of Gold is third and Cut Above fourth then Riveretto is fifth and you can see Shergar just to the right of the picture on the outside of that one the only one not in the picture at this stage is the rank outside of Brigadier Hall. But Magikin in the lead by two lengths from Bustomi in second. Then in third is Glint of Gold. Fourth now cut above. Fifth is Riveretto. Then behind that one comes Shergar and Brigadier Hall tailed off. And they continue their journey down the far side of the track with Magikin in the lead from Bustomi in second place. Magikin in the lead from Bustomi in second. Then Glint of Gold is third, and behind Glint of Gold on the inside is Cut Above, on the outside of Cut Above is Shergar, on the inside of Shergar, great is Riveretto and Brigadier Hawk tailed off. <coughs> it's Magikin in the lead, from Bustomi in second place, Magikin in the lead of Bustomi second, Glint of Gold third, and then Shergar beginning to make us round on the outside, it is good fourth place now, as they continue their journey down the far side, Shergar going into fourth place, just on the borders of Glint of Gold, who is third behind Bustomi second, who is moving up on the inside of Magikin, so the race really on now, as Bustomi left the figure, takes up the running, from Glint of Gold in second, Shergar is third, and then cut above his fourth, the pacemaker has done his bit, he's dropping back, Riveretto is next, and Brigadier Hawk getting back into the picture now as they begin the turn into the home straight. It's Bustomi in the lead from Clint of Gold second, then Shergar moving well up on the outside is third. Cut above is fourth and Brigadier Hawk fifth, and the other two are beginning to lose touch. Just over four furlongs to go. Turning into the home straight in the St. Ledger. Clint of Gold on the outside of Bustomi. Shergar spotted white face and his tongue hanging out as usual, but just in behind the East comes Cut Above. They've got three and a half furlongs to go. In the St. Ledger and Leicester Ticket being for his eighth St. Ledger. In the lead on Bustomi. Clint of Gold coming. So two up on the outside is Shergar. Three furlongs left to go. Bustomi, Clint of Gold, Shergar, Cut Above. Developing into a four horse race this. Just over two and a half furlongs to go, Bustomi, Glint of Gold, Shergar, Willie, uh, Walter Swinburne, asking that one to pitch and he's not finding an awful lot as Glint of Gold takes it up, two furlongs to go, Glint of Gold, Bustomi, cut a 
above and Shergar. Shergar under pressure though with two final steps to go. And he's losing touch. Final and a half to go. Clint of gold, bust over, cut above. Shergar is beaten into the ledger. Over a pearl to go. Clint of gold in the lead. From cut above who's finishing strongly. And cut above comes to really take it up. Cut above from Clint of gold, bust over and Shergar. Coming well inside the final half turn off. Cut above coming up towards the line, drawing away. Coming up towards the line, cut above is going to win it. At the line, cut above the win it. Clint of gold second. Bust over is third. Shergar only fourth. With a long, long gap to bring it here, Hawk. An even bigger one to Riveretto and Magic in his tail. The cause of Shergar's defeat is debatable. Some feel he was past his best for the season. Others are of the opinion that Shergar could not stay a one mile four furlong ledger distance, as he was a quick action horse. However, perhaps tellingly, any thoughts of going to Paris for the Prick de Art de Triomphe are shelved, and Shergar is retired. He is Europe's 1981 Horse of the Year with a time form rating of 140, a figure exceeded by only a handful of other horses. From 8 starts, he has 6 wins and a second. Being syndicated for 10 million as a stallion, he is the most valuable horse in the world. Sugar returns to County Kildare to stand at stud. TV news cameras swarm Dublin Airport to cover his homecoming. The Irish are proud. At his one season at stud, he sized three group winners from a small crop, suggesting if kindly given the chance, he could have matched his racetrack performance and developed into a super sire. 